So what's a good GMAT score and what does it take to get it? So that's a tough question to answer. I think a good GMAT score is really subjective. Average GMAT score is about a 540, so a good score is anything above that. For the top 10 business schools, a 700 to 720 is considered the gold standard. And that's about 90th percentile, so you would have to beat out about 90% of other test takers to get there. I had a tutoring student last year, actually, uh, who I still have on her intake questionnaire that it says she won't be satisfied with anything less than a 720. Uh, and after working about two or three months, uh, she scored a 680 on the real test after having scored a 590 the first time around. And she applied to Harvard with her 680 and got in, and now she's graduating. For IR, for the top schools, if you get at least a 6 out of 8, that's competitive. And for the essays, uh, if you get at least a 4.5 or 5 out of 6, that's also uh, a great score as well. A high 40s score in quant, 48 or 49 would be ideal, and a high 30s or low 40s score in verbal. All that said, you really want something that's gonna show what kind of applicant you are. So if you have a very strong verbal undergrad and you went into some kind of English or writing focused job, something that doesn't have a lot of math, then you may wanna push your quant score a little bit higher on the GMAT. The first thing that you should do is look up the websites of some of the business schools that you want to go to and check out what their score ranges are. Shooting for the median at one of your target schools is a really good idea. Keep in mind when you do so that they are averages. So a lot of their admitted students have below these averages. Do a little research, maybe even into yourself. Why do you want to get an MBA? What courses do you want to take? What do you want to do with your degree afterwards? You are going to have to sacrifice some things to study for the GMAT fully. Generally speaking, it will probably take at least three months of intensive study, maybe 10 to 15 hours a week. Uh, the bigger the improvement you need, the more it's going to take, of course. You also need good time management. You need a good sense of which questions on the exam are worth your time, and maybe should have more time dedicated to them, and which questions on the exam are not worth your time at all, because even if you spend two, three, four minutes on them, you're unlikely to get to an answer. The test will actively try and punish people who only know the formal ways of solving problems, and so you'll have to work on trying to improve your strategies for things like working backwards or plugging in your own numbers, or even just estimating and thinking carefully. It's going to involve setbacks uh, and just major challenges. If you see these challenges as evidence of your unworthiness, you're not going to get there. If you see these challenges and failures as opportunities to learn, you're putting yourself into a much better position to achieve your goals. If you like this video, subscribe. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.